blockchain.com. Hum, 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 hum. The situation in Bosnia has been back in the news lately, which is always unnerving for me, partly because it reminds me of how many of the same mistakes the world is making and how many of the same mistakes I'm making. Back in early 1992, focused on a new girlfriend, I sort of lost interest in the Balkans and the war that was going on there. Actually, it was sort of in a transitional phase at that point between the Croatian War and the Bosnian War, but I just wasn't paying attention. I was like everybody else. And sort of under our nose is one of the most important things of the late 20th century happened. Now I find myself again, you know, I find it tr difficult to pay a lot of attention this time, I guess, because I have my hands full with the New Hampshire situation. But as I understand it, what's going on is essentially displeasure with the Byzantine bureaucracy that has been imposed on Bosnians of all ethnicities. But there's also this revolt against alleged privatization. But as the old Yugoslav dissident Milo Vangelis used to say, don't trust, well, I'm paraphrasing him, don't trust headlines, trust history. History indicates that Bosnia is one of the few places in the world that maybe really does benefit from outside rule. History also tells us that no outside ruler ever stays anywhere forever. It's unsustainable. The Turks left, Yugoslavia left, the Italians left, and at some point the Americans are going to leave. Presumably all they've done is to freeze dry all the problems that were already there for thawing after they leave, thawing and overheating. People in Bosnia can probably get along quite a bit better with one another. Now that Milosevic is dead, it was sort of, in some ways, a one-man problem. But that one-man problem created so many understandable vendettas and so many sides, it's still hard to imagine Bosnia staying completely at peace with itself without peacekeepers of some kind. Since I can't advocate the use of tax dollars for any purpose, I can't advocate for the continued American presence or the continued presence of uh, any national, you know, government-type peacekeepers funded by stealing money from the taxpayers. But I really do worry about what will happen when they leave. That means some sort of alternate solution at least has to be discussed. The one that instinctively comes to my mind is one that the people who live there might not like, so I wouldn't really be able to favor it, even though I favor it. But this would be to simply continue the international presence just like it is minus one ingredient. Uh, and that element, as always, would be taxation. So no tax dollars are uh, allowed to go from taxpayers to the Bosnia peacekeeping mission. Actually, I have even less control over what European governments do than I do over what American uh, government does. But why not set up a fund uh, in the United States or internationally? Uh, call it the, you know, uh, I don't know what you call it, the uh, Bosnia Committee of Safety or whatever. And people can make donations to fund a continuing American presence in the country. Initially, that might just mean a different uh, source of money for the troops who are already there, but obviously the, the amount would be less than what is currently being spent, and the number of troops would go down. If Bosnians don't, really don't, like privatization as is claimed, maybe the American force could continue being an American government force, if, if that's really what they want, but much smaller and voluntarily funded. This idea comes with problems all its own. But again, what we're shooting for here is not perfection, just peace without taxation of Americans, without an increase in tyranny over there. I don't know if a smaller force would be able to do the job. Uh, you know, the old Unprofor uh, force couldn't. Human rights monitors weren't particularly effective during the war. And I'm not comfortable too much with this whole tripwire concept where you have just a small number of American, like in North, like in South Korea, where you have just 40,000 American troops over there, enough to get America into the war, but not enough to prevent some serious damage by the North. I don't really have an answer for this concern in the Bosnia scenario. 
The other problem, of course, is, well, who wants to be occupied by the American government? Well, remember, I'm the last person who likes that, but, again, we have to focus a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, what Bosnians like, what they want. And by, of course, when I say Bosnians, I'm talking about Serbians and Croatians that live in Bosnia and might not call themselves Bosnians. Uh, but, you know, the Americans, like them or not, they were effective in Bosnia in bringing about a peace. They were not hated by any faction. They still aren't, to a large extent. I have to defer at least a little bit to what has worked least badly in Bosnia. Another solution that I kind of like is what I call the uh, how not to divide the indivisible solution. Actually, I don't call it that. It was an idea forwarded in the early 90s for a non-ethnic division of the country. So you like, essentially allow parts of the, the country to secede but only along watershed lines or other easily drawn map lines that don't rely on ethnicity. Because when they tried to make an ethnic division of Bosnia around 1991, the Muslim-dominated government did agree to that initially. However, it faced such large-scale protests from Bosnians against this kind of division uh, that they uh, they reneged. And there are probably other reasons for reneging, such as the old uh, warning by the Serbian leader that he would commit genocide. But I guess if you could divide Bosnia in there, I mean, okay, there was another, there was another case around 1993 where you know, the international community tried to impose a an ethnic partition of Bosnia. That, that went over like a lead balloon too. Oh, and it also indirectly resulted in the muslim Croat War, which killed probably 50,000 people and led to the Siege of Mostar, which was worse than the Siege of Sarajevo. But maybe a split along geographic lines instead of ethnic ones would be viable. I'm not certain how much this would help, but it's a much more appropriate type of independence for Bosnian regions than one based on ethnicity. If you can't draw the, the, the smallest line down Bosnia without cutting a person in two if you try to draw it ethnically. Ultimately, at least when it comes to the American involvement in Bosnia, what needs to happen is so much the same as what needs to happen with all our problems. We need to go to the root. The fact that Americans are not wealthy enough to really do much about problems overseas by themselves, all their money's taken from them by the federal government, it seems. With Americans relieved of their own Yugoslav-style government, they'd be wealthy again, and they'd be able to form charitable groups that help keep a peace. They'd be able to voluntarily fund such a thing with all their extra money. They wouldn't be restricted by Washington from doing these things. Institutions of a type we've not ever really seen in the recent past would, would come into existence. You know, there's another advantage to having a privately funded American presence in Bosnia as opposed to this government thing, and that is that it would be much more uh, responsive. They would, their donations would go down uh, if they weren't making Bosnians happy. And they currently are not, really. I mean, again, it's, <laughs> it's one of the least bad situations that has existed there, but... It's so bad, and could be so much better. It's bad like the rest of the world is bad. I mean, Bosnia is a wonderful place, but uh, it's just the current situation there, like everywhere else, is just so Byzantine with the bureaucratic hassles people have to go through. Anyhow, just my thoughts. Tell you what, if this situation goes south in Bosnia this time, I'm not going to be doing much like I did last time because I got my hands full, and so many Americans do. I should at least talk about it a little bit. Blockchain.info's free Bitcoin web wallet. Chock full of privacy and security features. Two-factor authentication. A second password for sending coins. They never have control over your passwords or your coins. They don't even require your personal info. Get yours today at blockchain.com. Um, 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 um.